Hello everybody, welcome to my video and on this video I will be going over graphing sine and cosine um, but really just looking at amplitude and period in the next few sections 6.2 and 6.3 I'll be going over, um, actually just 6.2 I'll be going over phase shift so for this one I'm just talking about amplitude and period so what I'd like to do first is um, to, let's take a look at uh, a, the graph of y equals a sine of bx now what I go over right here with a sine of bx is going to be the same thing for cosine. Um, just know that cosine, and I'll draw the cosine graph here in just a second. Um, just know that cosine is it just starts at a different initial y value. So, but the 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 rules for what a and b do to the graph are the same thing. So um, notice here that I have a set to one and b set to one. And if you remember when we went over functions a long time ago and translations of functions, y equals a f of x. Okay, this was a vertical stretch or shrink by a factor of a. So we would stretch it or we would shrink it um, vertically. And if we had a number inside the parentheses, a x, this was a horizontal stretch or shrink um, or contraction depending on uh, what a was, and that would be by a factor of 1 over a, so we would actually take the reciprocal. So keep that in mind when I go over and, and take a look at this. So I just want to, to show you what happens in a little demonstration. If I increase my value of a, notice that the graph doesn't really move except for a vertical and horizontal shrink. All right, so you can see that as I approach 2, now instead of going to 1, I'm going all the way to 2. So this value of A stretches it this way. Let me bring it back down to 1. And B, just like we talked about in a few seconds ago, B is going to either make it shrink and compact, or it's going to stretch out. So it stretches out. As the value, notice as the value of B gets smaller, it stretches out wider. And that goes with the what we just talked about where if you multiply the A inside, we're looking at a horizontal strength or stretch by a factor of 1 over A, which is a reciprocal. So a smaller value will stretch it out really, really wide. Okay, And a larger value will start to shrink it in. Um, and when you look at this, notice that as I increase B, all right, this, this graph, is sine graph, is called a, a periodic graph, meaning that it, it starts and then it, at some point it cycles again. So it goes up, down, and at this point here it starts over again, up, down, and then it starts over again. It kind of repeats itself. So that's called a periodic function. And notice here that as B gets larger, the period, which is the length of the length between here, right here, the length that it takes for one cycle to happen, um, this period gets shorter. So as B gets larger, that period, the time it takes to get from here to here and have another cycle, that gets smaller and smaller. So the bigger value of B, the smaller value of our of our period, and vice versa, the smaller value of B, the larger our period gets. Okay, so um, let's take that idea, and go back to my PowerPoint here, and um, look at what these, what these vocabulary are in terms of amplitude and period. So the general form of any sine graph or cosine graph, um, and, and then for sine, this is called a sinusoid, any, any type of sine or cosine graph is called a sinusoid, um, is A sine of BX plus C plus D. We're going to deal with C and D later. Um, right now we're looking only at A and B, and that's what we just did in that demonstration. So um, A is called the, the actually the absolute value of A is called the amplitude. So absolute value of A, because what if the A was negative? Well, we remember from our, um, our functions that we have a negative in front of our function, we would just flip it and would be a, it would be a reflection about the x-axis. So in this case, what our amplitude is, it's really the height that our graph goes to, we want to make sure we take the absolute value of that. Okay, um, the formula for finding our period, and like I told you before, the period is the length of one cycle. The, the time it takes to repeat is going to be two pi over b, um, and that comes from the fact that if you remember, when I had b set to one, 
when I had B set to 1, we saw that when B was set to 1, we saw that the period, and, and I, I should set it back to 1 here, the period, the length it takes to get to 1, one cycle is 2 pi, so 0 to 2 pi. So that's that shows us here when we have the formula 2 pi over B, B is 1, the period would be 2 pi. Okay, so that's the formula. So let's go ahead and take this information and look to graph actually a sine and cosine function. So I have this example here, y equals 3 sine of 2x. And what we're going to do is first we want to find the amplitude. And so the amplitude here is going to just be 3 because, you know, we take the absolute value of 3 and we get 3. And our period is going to be 2 pi over b. And in this case, b was 2. So 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So what this says is that for an amplitude of 3, I'm going to have a period of pi. That's going to be the time it takes for me to get to one cycle. Now, just generally speaking, I know that sine goes up. Um, and, and I kind of goofed here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and say this is 1. That's 1. That's negative 1. Okay. So I know that um, sine goes up to 1. All right, I'm just drawing the sine graph and then down to through pi, 2 pi. Okay, this is so this is the regular sine graph. Now I'm changing the sine graph and have an amplitude of 3 and a period of pi. So here is when I should end one cycle. I should go up, then down, then back up and end at pi. So halfway from there is going to be here. And we notice that the sine graph goes up and then down. So I'm going to go up and then down and then back to pi with an amplitude of 3. So there's my amplitude of 3, 3. So I'm going to go up through here, down through here. Excuse my horrible drawing. OK. Try that drawing again here. All right, so there's one period of this graph, y equals 3 sine of 2x. Now, I could continue graphing this, um, and we'll notice that, let's just draw some of these points in here. And notice that it takes two cycles to get to 2 pi in this case. Um, and that gets us into another, another vocabulary we're called frequency. And frequency is the reciprocal of period. So uh, where my period is pi, my frequency is 1 over pi. It just means it's, this is the number of cycles in pi. So I got one cycle in pi radians. And I can continue this on the opposite side as well. Um, down through here and so forth. Okay. I, I'm telling you, man, I am, I am really messing up this, this graph in terms of consistency here. Okay, so there we go. Um, and now let's take, we'll take a look at one more example. Somebody's behind me at home. Don't know who it is, but I'm going to keep working here. Okay, so this other example is a cosine graph. Now, just real quickly, cosine starts at 1. And we saw this a, a while back when we looked at the 12 basic functions. So cosine will start at 1, and go like this, down through 1 half. Oops, sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. It actually okay, it starts at 1, goes through 1 half, down at pi, through 3 halves, And just like that. Okay, so we, we can get that from the unit circle, looking at the points in the unit circle. So now what I want to do again is I want to um, specify what the amplitude is. The amplitude here is 1. Remember that even though this is negative, the, the amplitude has to be the absolute value of that. So we got negative 1 here. And the period, the period is going to be 2 pi over b again. Okay, what is b in this case? Well, notice that we have x over 2. So b is going to be 1 half, so 1 half. 
So in this case, our period is 4 pi, which means it's going to take 4 pi to get this one graph here. So we're going to have this pretty elongated um, with an amplitude of 1. So we're not really going to go higher or lower than 1. But what we are going to do is reflect this around the x-axis because this is negative. So we got that negative is going to be a reflection x-axis, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a different color here. Let's use blue. Um, we're going to reflect this. So it's down here. But we are going to have to notice that the, the period is 4 pi. So instead of going up through pi over 2 and then back down, we're actually going to stretch this out and go up through pi and then all the way over to here so that if I went all the way, again, and we can't see the rest of this graph because this, this graph table is not big enough, but if we went all the way out, we would get back to negative 1 at 4 pi. All right, and we'll see that right now on the other side of, okay. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. here but hopefully you get the idea that from here okay I'm going down back up to here this is a length of 4 pi I've gone I've gone I've gone 2 pi here and 2 pi here and that's a length of 4 pi and that's one cycle which is one period okay all right so um, those are two examples um, I recommend you look at the the few examples the few problem sets in the book um, and that should really really kind of solidify this for you make sure you do the whisk if you're in my class otherwise um, send me some comments thank you for joining me good luck